What's up, Brewtubers? Welcome to another brew day. Um, it's actually a repeat of a brew day I did before, which is my plum porter, but a little bit more exciting this time around because um, I have this, which is my Brewster Beacon from Brewolution. Ordered this, I think, about a month ago. It came in the post a while back, but I've only just got around to opening it. Uh, I have an unboxing video that I might have put up already or not, but let me just try this. Click the link above and you can see it. Like I said, another brew day. Very excited about this one. Making my plum porter and a couple things that I want to improve upon this time around are the efficiency in my mashing. I want to improve upon the strength. Uh, that I achieve with this, the ABV. I want it to be up around 6%. Um, I'm pretty sure that it was quite strong last time, although I don't know the exact figures. I think it could have been hovering around anywhere between 3 and 5%. But aiming to make a 6% plum porter on the Brewolutions Brewster Beacon. Now, uh, I've just got my uh, strike water for my mash heating up there. Um, the great thing about this is that it comes with the ability to set it at a different wattage. So um, I think I set it about maybe 15 minutes ago uh, and we're approaching our strike water temperature very quickly. So very happy about that. Uh, you could also see in the background here that I bought a new fermenting bucket. I always wanted a see-through one just so that I could see the fermentation happening while it's going through its process. Um, so yeah, just picked that up from the homebrew store earlier today, 20 quid, thought why not, instead of investing in a Fermentosaurus for now, uh, yeah, a 20 quid fermentation bucket, it's a no brainer. We have the grains down here, I'll take a close up of that for you in a minute, but my grain bill this time is about, I think it's around six and a half kilograms, so I'll run through the recipe now just for you really quickly. I've got uh, two Ropel malt, 5.4 kilograms. I've got 0.32 of wheat, 0.73 of crystal, and 0.3 of chocolate malt. I am also going to do something different this time and put the plums, which I am going to use, into the fermenting bucket before I rack the wort in there for, fer for fermentation. In the last video, I had left it fermenting for about three and a half days before I did that. I opened it up and then put the plums in. I don't want to do that this time. So what I'm going to do this time around is I'm going to blitz the plums up into a puree, put them into the fermentation bucket, and then rack from my Brewster Beacon into the fermenter so that it all infuses and then I'll pitch the yeast and I'll leave it going for seven days. We'll be fermenting at about 18 degrees. I've got a US 04 yeast, so anywhere between 17 and 20 degrees will be great. 19 liters of mashed water followed by sparging, 23 liters of sparge water. So we're aiming at the end of this for a batch size of 25 liters. My first batch size was 15 litres uh, in the cask in the shed, but this time we're aiming for 25 litres. So we're upping the plums. Uh, I think last time it was around 700 grams. I think this time I have about one and a half kilos. I'll uh, catch up with you when we're mashing in because I have this new toy. Woohoo! Okay, so the Brewster has reached the target temperature for the mash at 76.8 degrees. I'm now going, to, uh, now going to put the mash in and then we'll begin our mash at 68 degrees for one hour. A few moments later. I've just come back on here quickly to say that there's 30 minutes, 38 minutes left on the mash. But honestly, watching the Brewster Beacon do this, I, I always thought brewing was fun. And um, even to the point where I pour a drink that I've made into a glass and I drink it, I still giggle with excitement. But watching the Brewster Beacon 
do its thing with the mash and just controlling the recirculation of the wort and seeing the darkness of the color and just seeing it in action is just, honestly, if I didn't think it could get more fun, I was wrong. Love this machine. A few moments later. Okay, so the mash is done now. Um, I actually made a decision on this one to mash for 90 minutes. Whereas before I've always done 60 minutes. I just wanted to see what it'd be like to mash for 90 minutes this time around. Again, I want to extract as much sugar from the grain as I can. So I just think 30 minutes extra would help me do this. So yeah, it's all done. Now we're going to sparge. Okay, so uh, we'll get that done and then we can move on to the boil and I'll talk more about what I'm doing then with the hops. So, sparged off the grains, we have reached, according to the side, just over, and I mean just over 29 litres of work. Um, I still have about three litres up in the hot liquor tub which I might have to use later on if I haven't reached my target gravity, which is 1.057 for this batch. Uh, looking up online, I can use that to dilute it if I maybe need to do that, but yeah. So 29 liters in the boiler, just getting up to a boil, gonna do 60 minutes. First edition of Styrian Golding hops go in at the boil, and then towards the end, we put in our Cascade hops. But again, really happy with the machine, love it, makes life so easy. I can just sit here and watch it do its work all night. Right, we'll see you when we put the hops in. Uh. Lando! <coughs> Yay, Lando! Uh -huh. Oh, shush. Okay, so we've hit the rolling boil, so that's time for the first edition of hops to go in. It's Styrian Golding's uh, measurement to go in was about 15 grams, but as you saw, we just went to 17, a little bit too much, but I think it'll be okay. We're gonna go in now for the whole hour, so here they go. Okay, so we're 45 minutes into the boil. So it is the second edition of hops. These are Cascade and it's the same amount as before, 15 to 17 grams. Right, these are going in. Lando loves a hop edition, huh? Hey? Nah. Boil, my pretties. Okay, so another good thing about this system is that I get to run it all from my tap. So we've got the chiller that we immersed in the last 15 minutes of the boil. That is running cold water in, hot water out. We've also turned the pump on so that we recirculate the warm yeast, which means the temperature will drop even quicker. So we've gone from 100 degrees all the way down to 55 in a matter of just a few minutes. I'm so impressed with this machine. It's just making my life so easy. I'm just sat here at the desk doing stuff on the laptop, watching it do its thing. Uh, like I said, I'm just so impressed. Anyway, it's on to do the plums now. We're gonna blitz them, get them ready for the fermenter because I have a feeling that this process here of cooling will be pretty quick and we wanna get into the fermenter as soon as possible. Okay, so we're on to that. Okay, so we're at 20 degrees now. I'm gonna turn off 
the cooling tap and it's time to transfer our beer into the fermenter where you've already seen the plums go in. Uh, give it a good shake, pitch the yeast, put it in the shed to ferment and then we're done. All right, okay, two hands needed for that. So I'm gonna put you down here and you get to see it from where I put you down. There we have it, our porter. Okay, so there it is, right there. Plum porter, about 25 liters worth. Got the yeast in, shook it up good, and uh, it's, it's sealed off now, and yeah, gonna put it in the shed, gonna put the temperature regulator on it to keep it at a nice 18 degrees, and hopefully in a week's time, we will have a mwah, beautiful, 6% bump porter. I've got the hydrometer ready over there to take a gravity reading. I'll flash that up on the screen now to let you know what that reading was. And yeah, we'll uh, be back in a couple of weeks maybe for a taster. Definitely be back for a taster. All right, thanks for watching. Listen, if you like the video, like it, maybe leave a comment, maybe subscribe to see more of my homebrew days as I get through them. I've got a couple of new ones coming up. I'm going to be doing an IPA and a stout. But yeah, like I said, if you like the video, like it. If you think it was good enough to, that you want to see more, subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Right, I've got to clean this up and get to bed. It's late. Right, cheers for watching. Nice one.